Hello, I'm Daryl Crow, and with me today is Joe Kaczynski. Hi, everybody. And today we're going to be answering another question from our audience. Who do we have today, Joe? Today we have a beautiful question from Florence from Canada, and uh, she's been watching our techniques. So, was this a beautiful question or a beautiful Florence? Both. Oh, both. wow, that's the best Absolutely. of both worlds. And the question is this. In the preparation video on the basic techniques of oil painting, we show all the brushes that he used in the series. Mm -hmm. However, we really don't go in and show how to use the brushes too much. She'd like a little bit more in-depth information on how to use the brushes that we outline in our preparation video. Well, that is an interesting question because when you see what we did, is we actually spent a full 18 hours answering that question. And, and the reason is, is when you go and do something like skies and clouds, mm -hmm. you can use several different kinds of brushes. It's your choice. But we show how to use different brushes to form different clouds and get different types of skies. Same way with mountains. You can make mountains with a, a knife or with a, a fan brush or uh, all, uh, any kind of a flat brush, even a filbert. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen you do that. Yeah, and then it just goes on, you know, whether it's water, whether it's trees, whether it's... Uh, so we hope that by the end of going through the entire nine DVDs, 18 hours, mm -hmm. they'll have an understanding of how to use the brushes. But you know, I do kind of empathize with her because it is a good question because is there a way that I can help structure the thinking, especially for beginners yeah. who are saying, oh, I got these dozen brushes. What do I use them for? Mm -hmm. So uh, did she happen to mention any particular brush that she uh, was? I believe the fan brush was one of the brushes mentioned. Okay, the fan brush. Well, let me spend a few minutes now talking about the fan brush. Why don't you do that? And what I'm going to do is I'll go actually film you doing this. Oh, you mean we're going to capture this on film so YouTube people and... Why not? And our club membership can actually have something to see? Absolutely. I'll be back. You're amazing. In the basic techniques of uh, oil painting, I pretty much do landscapes and seascapes. And the fan brush is a workhorse. There's two different sizes I like using. One is the number three, which is on the right-hand side, and it's number six, which is on the left. And the neat thing about it is when you learn to use one, you learn to use both. So we're just going to concentrate on the number three. The, uh, the nice thing about these brushes is we can use them for blending, for detail work, and we can use them even for drawing to a certain extent. So let me just show you some of the things, and I emphasize some of the things that you can do with these brushes. These are the most popular usages of these brushes that uh, we use in the landscape. But, you know, as you get familiar with each brush and you develop your own techniques and they become more and more second nature, you're going to find you do entire paintings with almost any of the brushes. That may be for the script liner. That take a very long time. So uh, as you get familiar and as you get used to using the brush, you can relax because you're going to be looking at the painting and say, oh, I want to do this. And you'll pick up the brush you like best to accomplish that particular task. But for beginners getting started, I use these for clouds, for trees, for forming land, the basic land like a path. And I don't really use them for uh, brushes, but I, I mean for bushes, but I do use them in making uh, uh, seascapes. So let's just get started with just four or five of those elements that are most popular in, that I use in uh, making a sky. Okay, I'm just going to grab a small amount of white right here. See that? Just a small amount. Now I've already put uh, a medium on the canvas, a clear medium and I have a little blue paint over it. So we're going to come up here to the left quadrant and we're going to make a cloud. Now loading it, we show you how to load in the uh, segment, but you just want to get some paint right there on the tip. Now see this? I am going in a circle like that, okay? 
So I'm going to do that quite a bit in order to make a cloud. See that? And what's so important about the uh, brush is that you can control where it goes. You don't have to go fast. You can go slow. See that? And then I go ahead and whoosh it, which means I'm just blending in. And there you are. You have a really nice cloud. Now I'm going to take a different brush. And the brush I'm taking is a two inch brush. Okay, now I'm just going to blend this brush. This, uh, use this brush as a blender. And I like bottoms that disappear. And then up in the air, up in the air, lightly, just going over that edge, set it in. And so that's how you use a fan brush for making a uh, cloud. Now for a tree, we'll just go ahead and grab some of this yellow that we have right here. That's got some green already made. We were working on another painting. See that? And even though there's really not a tree here, actually, let's use the big one. All right, we'll get a big old tree. We'll get some of this uh, green that's going right in here. Get a little bit of medium, that's what it needs. And then come right over here. We'll grab some blue. Don't forget, blue and yellow makes green just as much. All right, here we go. So I can do this with either brush. So you see here we have a cloud. So let's go right next to it. And we'll go ahead and put a tree just like that. And then all I do, I, I've got this brush loaded. And I just come to the side, all right? and just very lightly using the edge. Now in the tree video, I show you how to make all kinds of evergreens with all kinds of different uh, uh, colors and whether the branches go up, down, sideways, or it's an even more sparse, okay? And then we can come back and using the same brush with a brighter color, I could go ahead and uh, really fill this out. Okay, so that's a couple of items. Another thing I could do is go ahead and put ground. See how I'm just lightly tapping this brush? And uh, I'm just making a land form, a little hill. Just like that. It may seem like we're doing a painting, but we really aren't. All right, see that? Just showing you. All I'm doing is tap, tap, tap. So I would use this brush to make uh, trees. I would use it to make uh, different... Uh, clouds, and now as you can see, we can go ahead and use it to make a, a grassy hill. Now that's not the only way you can make a grassy hill, okay? The nice thing about these fan brushes is I can tap like we just did, or what I can do is lift up, see that, like smiles. And so this may seem far away because I don't see the individual blades of grass. But I can go ahead here and make a lot of individual little pieces of grass right there. See that? And this becomes a really nice open uh, frontier-like uh, area. And I can mix it in with different colors. But that gives you an idea. Now I can also bend down. See that? And it just gives you a different kind of wild texture. And notice that I'm not going super fast in any of the, this uh, pressing way down like that is a version of this other uh, smoother grass in the distance. But you get to control the shape. Another thing I like to use the fan brush for is water. So uh, water can be a lake, a pond, it can even be a waterfall. Okay, so you can go, pretend this is coming over here, and then see that word? Got to do that. That means good waterfall. All right, and then we can have the splash. So see, I can use that fan brush to make the splash at the end of a waterfall, just like that. And you can even come out of a waterfall and make cascades, just that easy. See that? And again, each cascade has its own. So this brush is very, very versatile. All right, there's a couple. 
And perhaps this is where practice gets to be fun. See that? And I could actually say over here is the lake. And I could just bring this right underneath. See that? I'm bringing it right underneath that little grass. And there it is. And then all of a sudden, it's going to... And it's joining this other lake. So we have a lot of things that we can do. Now, let me show you how you would do a seascape. Just get a little more paint. It doesn't matter when you're practicing what color you're using. I will go over here to the lower quadrant. Now, in doing seascapes, one of the things that you want to do is show water moving. So, I'll just go ahead and work this backwards and forwards. See that rocking stroke? Well, that's what really helps make some nice seascapes. So we'll just back it on. And see that? All of a sudden, you start to have an ocean feeling. Now, you don't want to get too carried away, or what you'll have is a tsunami. A lot of my students, then, especially when they're beginning, they get great tsunamis. Hollywood would do well to hire them for uh, doing the artwork and the animation. All right, see? Just that constant stroke back and forth. And you can vary it with different grays and blues and whatever colors you like. But you see how the brush is working. I'm not sitting here trying to make a beautiful painting here. I'm just showing you how easy this brush is and how versatile it is. We'll just have the ocean come right up here. Now, one of the things you often see is the foam running up on a beach. So uh, all I do there is take a large amount of the ocean color, see that? And I'll just go ahead and layer it. See, just like that. Wipe the brush dry because you want it absolutely dry. And then you pull it parallel to the bottom of the canvas. And you can do it easily with the fan brush. So you see, one of the reasons why I use the fan brush a lot is because you can do so many different things with it. That's why it's hard to say what brush you have to use with any one particular. Uh, so I'm just going to put that down. Now in terms of making a sky, let me just take some of this red color, a little bit of this. We'll get a little bit of pink going. I like pink. And I like some of these uh, clouds in the sky that are like just yeah, there we go. It's turning lavender because there's blue underneath. And they're what I call the staircase to heaven kind of cloud. See that? And you can even come over here. And so they're very, the fan brush is excellent for doing some really interesting uh, details in the sky, in the water, and on the land. The only thing I haven't shown you yet is a mountain, but we can get there. Okay, so there, see how easy that is? And then you can go ahead, take a little bit more of that color. And we'll take a little bit more paint and make another little cloud coming in here. And another one. Okay, so I think you kind of get the idea how you can have one of these uh, dramatic uh, skies with all kinds of different colors. Let me uh, show you a mountain and hill and rock real quick. I'm going to take a little bit of the uh, burnt umber. Come up here and we'll just make, uh, you might not see it, but we'll make a nice little mountain just like that. And it doesn't really matter if it's a mountain, a rock, it's, or uh, a desert scene. All right. 
Oh, we got a two peaker there. Then we have a big peak here and one there. And then I'll just take a little bit of this lighter color we have with the red and all right, just a little bit. We want just a little bit of color. And now I stroke the little dashes. See that? Little dashes. Now, if you're doing a whole painting, you can see easily how just using each of these brushes will go ahead and... Uh, you could just actually do the painting, but you're gonna find that you get better with certain brushes on certain items. And there are some predominant ones that I use. Uh, I use the fan brush quite a bit for clouds, and I use them quite a bit for water and for trees and sometimes for grass. There are many choices when it comes to each of these elements, but those are pretty much mine, all right. Now this could be rocks, or uh, this could be the mountain range, and then all you have to do is pull it over, just like that. Okay, so you know, in my videos, my nine uh, basic techniques of video, we show you how to use not only the fan brush, but our entire lines of brushes. Practice and practice. So watch a segment, practice it, and move on. That was a great question indeed, Joe. Yeah, Florence really, uh she actually came up with a beauty. I think everybody's going to enjoy this one. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And folks, keep those questions coming in. I'm Daryl Crow, And yes, you can paint.